It's spring, which means it's time to put my asparagus into the ground. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and I discuss everything gardening so that you can become a better gardener. Join me today as I share with you all the steps and tips for planting asparagus. We all know that food tastes much better when we grow it ourselves, and I have never tasted asparagus as good as the asparagus that I've grown. So in my new house, in my new garden, this is one of the first things I planned was an asparagus bed. Now do take some time to figure out where your bed's going to be, and then take the time to prepare it, because asparagus can easily live 15, 20, and more years in the same spot. So I'm putting the asparagus in this bed today, and for the next couple decades, I plan to enjoy it. The site for your bed should have at least eight hours of full sun during the growing season, and the soil should be pretty rich and well-draining. You only get one shot at setting up your asparagus bed, because once the plants are in place, they shouldn't be disturbed, and because they're going to come back year after year, you want to give them as good a start as possible. If you have a clay soil, they might not do as well, and sandy soil is marginally better. So I actually started with a raised bed and put in a good blend of organic material so that when I plant my asparagus, it has that good start. This is a 12 inch high bed, and after I put it in place, I dug down an additional six to eight inches throughout. So the total depth is about 18 inches. And then as I began to fill it, I started with some of the bulk soil blend that I buy and use in most of my beds. I just place that at the bottom and then spread it out. And then I began adding other organic material. I added peat. I added compost. I added biochar. I added just about everything I had available to get this soil as rich and organic as possible. This is my preferred method to essentially build up 18 inches, and I have complete control over the soil that I put into this bed. Many other sources out there that tell you how to plant asparagus will tell you to dig a trench 18 to 24 inches deep, and that's what's necessary if you're planting in open ground, because in that deep trench you're adding the compost and the organic material that the asparagus will need. It's purely up to you. Both of them are pretty labor intensive. Digging a trench and amending the soil, or building a bed and then adding amended soil. Asparagus is dioecious, and that means that the plants are either male or female. Normally not a big concern in a garden, but with asparagus, the female plant will produce a fruit, little berries, and that can take energy away from the roots. So to get the best growth over a period of time, most gardeners who grow asparagus opt to get male plants. Jersey Knight is a very common one, and today I'm planting Jersey Supreme. So with these male-only plants, I can expect that pretty much all of their energy is going to go into their roots to help develop a nice, robust plant. You can grow asparagus from seed, and I've had some pretty good success with that. But most commonly, you'll buy the asparagus as a plant. It'll actually come looking like a bunch of little octopi or squids. It's dormant, and these are the plants and the roots that you'll be growing. As you look at these individual plants, you can see that they have long roots, and typically the plants will be one or two years old. And then at the tip is where the spears will actually start growing. And on this plant, I can actually see 
a little bit of white that's starting to appear. This is going to be an asparagus spear. This whole thing will be put into the soil with the roots spread apart. And then as it breaks dormancy, the spears will pop up from this piece, which is called the crown. It's important that the crown portion go up and the roots that are dangling go down. The plants should be put in the soil about 18 inches apart. And again, you'll see many sources that say plant 18 inches apart and then put the rows of asparagus four feet apart. Well, that's just ridiculous. And it holds with a lot of what I've said in earlier videos. The reason for putting rows of asparagus four feet apart is so that you can get within those plants and take care of weeds and be ready to harvest. But especially in a bed like this that I'm not going to be walking on, there's absolutely no reason why every single plant can't be 18 inches apart. So this is a three foot wide bed. I'll put a row with the plants 18 inches apart, and then my second row will be 18 inches from that first one where I'll put another series of plants. In this bed, I'm planning on putting 12 of these crowns. Let me show you a couple different methods for putting the asparagus in the ground. The first involves digging a trench. And this is a traditional method because we're going to be putting in a lot of plants and so a long trench makes it easy to just put in the individual crowns. The depth will vary based on your source, but based on information that I get from the University of Wisconsin Extension the trench only needs to be about six inches deep. There's an alternative method that's spread by a lot of other extension offices, and that's to dig a trench eight inches deep. With the trench dug, you can lay your crowns in the bottom of the trench about every 18 inches. The idea in the eight inch deep trench is to put a little mound in the middle of the trench that's about two inches high and then spread out the roots of your crown and lay it on top of this little two inch mound. So ultimately the crown is going to be about six inches deep and then you begin filling in the trench to bury the roots and the crown. For a six inch deep trench, you don't need to make the mound. You just separate out the roots and the crown will be at six inches below the surface. And then you just fill in the trench. Now, for long roots like these, you can either pinch or prune off the tips because often they'll be dried out in transit. And if they're wanting to climb up the side of the trench, just keep it in the trench, pruning as needed and covering up the crown and the roots. Now you'll probably see a very common recommendation for what you do at this point. After you've covered the roots and the crowns with just a couple inches of soil, you leave it that way. And then you wait for the plants to sprout and start to grow. And then over the season, you add more soil, being sure not to cover up the entire spear, but just the stock as it grows. But recent research has shown that that's not necessary at all. In the old days, with some of the varieties that were planted much deeper, that might have been necessary. But with a lot of the varieties that we have now, as long as that crown is about six inches below the surface of the soil, you can fill the trench in completely. And this is the way I've done it for years. In each of my previous houses where I grew asparagus, I covered up the entire trench and the plants grew just fine. And especially in my area, that's important because 
I'll get some more snow. And the asparagus can handle snow, but as the snow melts, it's going to fill in the trench anyway. And then when we get some of our downpours associated with thunderstorms, it's going to fill in the trench. So I might as well fill in the trench right now the right way than to just let it happen over the course of many months. That's just too much extra effort. If you're putting in a lot of crowns, digging a trench and then just laying the plants along the trench may work well for you. But if you're only putting in a couple plants or you want very precise placement of the plants, you can dig single holes and put the plants in. Doing the same thing as before, pruning the tips of the roots as necessary, burying the roots, expanding the hole if you need to. And covering it up. And it is okay if you have a plant with extra long roots or you can see that all of the tips are dry to just go ahead and cut off the tips before you plant it in the hole. It's important to remember that these are live plants. And just like with any other transplant, you want to water them in very well right away. Now, this soil that I began with was moist because I've been prepping these, this bed for a few days. If you're planting in dry soil or if it's a particularly hot day, it's usually a good idea to go ahead and soak the roots in a bucket of water for an hour or two before you start planting. I made pretty quick work of this, so I didn't have to do that. But if you have a lot to plant and you might be a little bit slower, go ahead and put those roots in water while they're waiting to go in the ground. I saved a bag of grass and leaves in the fall specifically for this purpose. I want to mulch right away and on top of the grass and leaves I'm going to put some straw. I did add more water on top of this mulch and now the soil should stay consistently moist. That's why I like to put mulch in place right away, especially in a dry region like mine. And it's another reason why I don't like digging the trench and then gradually filling it in, because if you do that method, you can't mulch for a couple months. This way, the soil stays moist, the mulch is cutting down on the potential for weeds, which could compete with the young asparagus plants, and it's adding some organic material to my soil. If you have any questions, do let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like to become a better gardener, well then subscribe to the Gardener Scott channel and be sure to click on the bell so you know when new videos are coming out. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.